Today we are discussing non-communicable diseases or NCDs, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, stroke, respiratory conditions such as asthma and cancer are examples of non-communicable diseases. They are conditions that cannot be passed on from one person to another. They are conditions caused by lifestyle choices such as poor diets, lack of exercise, alcohol and tobacco along with genetics and the environment playing key roles. In India, NCDs cast a heavy burden claiming 6 out of every 10 lives and occupying 4 out of every 10 hospital beds. Cardiovascular diseases stand as the leading cause of death with a stroke related death occurring every 4 minutes. Today, only 12% of Indians with blood pressure can effectively manage it. Diabetes is rampant, affecting 11% of the population. Over 3 crore Indians are asthmatic. And when it comes to cancer, we have a rising burden with 1 in 9 Indians expected to suffer from the disease in their lifetime. While talking about non-communicable diseases, it is also crucial to know about the metabolic syndrome. A combination of factors like obesity, high blood pressure and abnormal cholesterol which significantly heightens the risk of NCDs like diabetes, heart disease and even cancer. Shockingly, 25-45% to 45 of urban Indian adults currently grapple with the metabolic syndrome. The harsh reality about NCDs is that individuals must live with the conditions, enduring months, years or even lifetimes of management. The constant juggle of medications, side effects and financial strain not only affects the patient but takes a toll on the entire family's mental well-being, not to mention the long-term complications of the diseases themselves. Today, we are diving deep into the realm of NCDs. In this two-part series, we are exploring prevention strategies, treatment options and coping mechanisms with our esteemed experts. For the first part of this special two-part series, we have with us Dr. Heman Thakkar discussing various non-communicable diseases and in the second part of the show, we will dive deeper into India's diabetes problem with Dr. David Chandy. Stroke, heart attack, diabetes, chronic pulmonary disease, which is asthma, of course, anemia, cancer, sleep disorders, fatty livers, high uric acid, all these put together form this segment of non-communicable diseases. Something where you didn't get it because you forgot to wear your mask, but something which you grew into your body on your own. Let's start with which are the most common non-communicable diseases you see as a doctor and the primary causes amongst patients. So non-communicable diseases, as you said, cardiovascular, which is stroke, heart attack, diabetes, chronic pulmonary disease, which is asthma, of course, anemia, cancer, sleep disorders, fatty livers, high uric acid, all these put together form this segment of non-communicable diseases. Something that you have not caught it from your neighbor, something where you didn't get it because you forgot to wear your mask, mm. but something which you grew into your body on your own. Unhealthy living and lifestyles and adverse social and environmental circumstances. Those are the things that we see. So just to narrow down a little bit, how much does lifestyle play a part in terms of non-communicable diseases and how much does genetics? Because we're also talking about diseases such as cancer here. So genetics, the South Asian where we belong to, we have a diabetic gene. We have a cardiovascular gene. So the seed is planted at birth. However, how you nurture this seed, whether you allow it to recede in the background and you look after your lifestyle or whether you go gung-ho on salt, sugar and butter. Salt will give you hypertension, sugar will give you the diabetes and butter the hyperlipidemia, all of which puts together will give you the apple-shaped metabolic syndrome that you alluded to. Mm. So lifestyle is how you cater to that bad gene 
which you can't do nothing about. So if you're able to change your lifestyle, to exercise more, to eat wisely, to shun the wrong things, to keep alcohol, tobacco at bay, and even sleep well, then you can look after the condition as a whole. What about environmental factors such as pollution? So unfortunately, pollution has added a very tight blow to the heretofore pre-existing metabolic syndrome. And off late, we are seeing asthma, chronic obstructive lung disease, repeated sniffles and upper respiratory infection, chronic sinusitis, all this being added on. Mm -hmm. It's not only the urban problems of construction and dust, but even in the rural areas, the shredding of the wheat, the burning of the grass, so many other things, all that you inhale. Mm. And now, riding piggyback on post-COVID, the respiratory problems have come to the fore. So how well you look after the air that you breathe is more important, and how well you shun yourself from the chemical pollutants in the atmosphere is something that is important. According to you then, what would be the key risk factors for probably contracting a non-communicable disease? So I think it's unhealthy lifestyle. Mm. If you eat badly, you're only having fast food. If you're seeing that every time you want to celebrate, you don't go out anywhere, but you go and hit the bar. Mm. If you're having sweets to celebrate, if you're not exercising, you're a couch potato. How many of these celebratory young people who are successful sit on their desk in front of a gigabyte screen mm. and do nothing about walking? Mm. Even simple walking regularly five days a week, 30 minutes, is enough to get your circulation going. Mm. So your unhealthy lifestyle, alcohol, tobacco, smoking, especially tobacco with smoking, adds on to all this. Mm. Going into a dark disco with loud music and bright lights is also environmental stress. Mm. And one of the newest additions to non-communicable diseases is Alzheimer's mm. and dementia, mm. which you get because of constant bombarding of your special senses with all sorts of external stimuli, which you are not programmed for which the body doesn't want, mm. but you still get it. The body never grew up with alcohol, tobacco, loud music, flashing lights, and excessive stimuli. Mm. Like you had the Blackberry syndrome when it came in. So moderation is extremely important. Where to draw the line between success and health, between suffering and striving, mm. where to draw the line for your own self. Are you seeing more NCDs with, uh, amongst younger population now as compared to earlier? So another NCD is anemia. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing these diabetes, hypertension, anemia, fatty liver mm -hmm. in the younger population. And all that breeds put together cardiovascular disease, strokes. Mm -hmm. In India, strokes outnumber heart attacks. So just imagine a person who is fully fit otherwise, but is lying paralyzed because he's had a stroke. Mm. We are seeing more and more. Six out of ten hospital beds, to quote you, what you said in the beginning. Mm. We are definitely seeing NCDs cripple the backbone of the economic infrastructure of this country because it is the young, the middle-aged who are into the best productive years of their life, getting handicapped because of their own doing. You're sawing the branch on which you sit. Mm. You have to decide what you're going to do about it. So this is basically a lot, is a lot of what you're seeing within the younger set is lifestyle related is and lifestyle. Not, not genetic, not well, because they're Unless you have a type testing. one diabetes, which is completely genetic. Remember, cholesterol is also genetic. Mm. So is hypertension, but you can change it. Your diet is important, which is why at the center stage of all this is obesity. Mm. 
Mm. Obesity is not a condition. Obesity is a disease. You have nurtured this obesity nine out of ten times because of your own doing. And from obesity stems insulin resistance, mm. stems hyperlipidemia, stems and wakes up the sleeping giant of bad sugars, bad blood pressure. It's all sitting there. Mm. But that extra weight, and you can see the answer when the gentleman whom you saw a year ago comes and says, sir, I've shed 12 kilos mm. and I've given up three of my tablets. Mm. So that's the bonus. The tablets were servicing the extra kilos. You get rid of your weight. And how are you going to get rid of weight? Not the easy way of getting it cut or getting it diverted. Get it with adequate nourishment prudently. Mm. Get it with good burning of calories religiously mm. and get it with a victory of mind over body. But no uh, GLP-1 drugs? No, you can take them if your doctor advises it. Mm. I have people coming in, sir, I'm a little obese. I need uh, that famous injection which Elon Musk took. Mm. Now, I don't think that people are looking at shortcuts. Mm. You want to earn money by pressing a few buttons so that the stock market indicator moves. That's not the way mm. you're going to get your obesity trimmed. Unless you don't discipline, your fat might go but you will develop some other NCD. Mm. There is no royal road to success. You got to inch yourself, but the fruits that you get from inching up are sweeter than the fruits that you desire to get from being poked by injections. Okay, all right. So that point is taken about uh, weight loss and obesity being at the center of probably all of these issues. So explain to us what metabolic syndrome is then. So metabolic syndrome is a conundrum of five or seven conditions. Mm. Hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, fatty liver, hyperuricemia. In Indians, you have hypertriglyceridemia along with apple-shaped obesity. The Indian, unfortunately, is short, stout, and apple-shaped. Residing in that abdominal fat is insulin resistance. Mm. He is not able to use his insulin, which his pancreas is producing because of the resistance mm. which the fat is giving. Mm. And this metabolic syndrome then decides whether salt will win over sugar and butter and which manifestation will come. But almost all full-blown metabolic syndromes have manifestations of all these three things. Mm. And that is obesity. Okay. But um, what is the difference in NCDs amongst men and women? Is there any distinction between the two? So this is where I'd like to bring cancer into the foreground. Mm. Unhealthy lifestyle, unhealthy reproductive habits, delayed marriages is probably propagated as one of the causes of cancer cervix and cancer breast. Of course, the papilloma virus and other things do come into the picture. So women for NCD of cancer have a preponderance to these. Men to prostate. Mm. A lot of stimulation of the sexual drive, sometimes with testosterone, mm. can stimulate the prostate. Mm. So again, women at menopause who are losing their estrogen protection are likely to develop and exacerbate or uncap or uncock the heretofore quiet hypertension, hyperlipidemia, etc. Mm. But unhealthy lifestyle applies to everybody. Mm. It is at which stage that you realize that you need. You know, Saturday night somebody will call you in India and say, what's the plan, which bar, which party? In Europe, mm. are we going rowing early Sunday morning? Mm. Are we going hiking? The difference is the mindset which has taught you to crave for something which the body doesn't accept. Hmm. Okay, well, that point is taken that maybe there needs to be a holistic change in terms of lifestyle and viewing, uh, you know. That doesn't mean I'm style. sounding like a sadhu sant. Party as much as you like, but when you, if you party hard, which you do, you must work on that. Hmm. You can't sit on your armchair. You must walk it off. 
you must eat it off correctly mm. and you have to see that you follow the do's and don'ts that your metabolic physician guides you to do. What are the long term complications uh, of NCDs? So if you have any one of these uh, tobacco, alcohol, salt, sugar, butter phased, you can get a stroke. Your kidneys will fail because of poor control of sugar. With your high blood pressure, you can get a heart attack. You can develop retinal problems. You can get peripheral vascular with amputations. Another important environmental factor mm. which nurtures NCD is inadequate sleep. Mm. You know, unfortunately, people boast. I'm absolutely all right. It is burning that reserve, which doesn't come overnight. You want to burn the candle longer, not burn the candle faster. Mm. Adequate sleep, adequate rest, which switches off the metabolism in the body. That's important. So conditioning your body to every little thing. If you don't dot the I's and cross the T's, you're going to grow one of the NCDs. You know, Dr. Thakkar, I also wanted to touch upon what the preventive tests are in order to reduce your risk when it comes to one metabolic syndrome and two non-communicable diseases, both so for men and women and age-wise. That's a very good question. If you have parents, even one of them, who is diabetic, hypertensive, heart disease, stroke, etc., both of them, then definitely, then you have to begin looking at your parameters early. Look at your lipid profile. Look at your sugar profile. Look at your blood pressure and don't gather weight. Mm. The puppy fat, the teenage fat, all that you should, when you enter your quarter century, start thinking of trimming it. Mm. You don't want to carry that burden. If you're into middle age, then if you have any one of these metabolic conditions, mm. think of treating it early, treating it well. And in most cases, we even give them a blood thinner. A blood thinner is an antiplatelet agent which preempts and prevents thrombosis, which gives rise to stroke, heart attacks, etc. And then as you age and get into menopause, women have to watch out more. Mm. Whether this unmasking of other hormonal or internal conditions because of loss of hormonal protection, mm. whether that needs to be attended to. Heart attacks and blood pressure are more common in men between 30 and 50. But after 50, women catch up like they always do and overtake the men between 50 and 60. The incidence in women nudges forward. So you have to try to stay one step ahead of the disease. If you are asthmatic, but you have to work next to the construction site, think of your vaccine, mm. think of protection. There are a lot of people who even in not COVID times used to wear a mask to go to work. Mm. You have to learn to sleep. If you're doing odd shifts and call centers, we did emergencies when we were kids. We used to come and sleep in the day. Mm. If you have a party twice a week, see to it that you are pulling up your socks the remaining five days of the week. Cholesterol, sugar, hypertension, blood pressure we've discussed in a previous episode, but I uh, wanted your sense in terms of what are the ideal levels. And since you've discussed weight so much, should one follow even the BMI index? So what should your choles ideal cholesterol levels so be? So cholesterol levels? total is not as important as the LDL low density lipoprotein and ideally under the level of 100 mm. and to do that don't say I'm going to walk it off because or I'm not going to eat because only 9% of your blood cholesterol comes from diet. Mm. So if your LDL is 150 and if you have zero fat you will still not reach 100. Mm. If you need the tablet take it. The other thing about us and our patients, humko goli nahi khana hai, hum dusra sab karenge. He goes and buys his Nike shoes and his lovely socks and half trousers and he starts walking. In six weeks, honeymoon is over. He goes back to his couch potato. So you have to take a tablet if you need to take it. Keep your blood pressure under check. 
the blood pressure value varies from age, but anything more than 120, 80 in younger age and 130, 90 as years advance, you need treatment. And sugar? Sugar, HbA1c is the three months sugar. Anything more than 6.1, 6.2, the blinkers have to come on. Depending on your age, the HbA1c rises. But you can see how the sugars drop if you eat prudently, if you burn it off. I've known people who do more exercise on Monday and Tuesday because they partied hard. Mm. It's like a, a salary in your pocket. If you spent too much over the weekend, you will spend less on Monday and Tuesday. All right. Uh, well, Dr. Thakkar, we need to take a short break, but we're going to be back with more questions. Stay tuned. <laughs>